Hi everybody, it's Lisa once again and in this hour we're going to do a class on um, well reading, a reading class and I chose some information actually off of um, a National Parks website and I put the link up over there in the Verbling chat so if you're interested in going to the Google document um, it's a little different type of reading than I usually do. Usually I choose some kind of article, um, like a news article or um, a blog article or something like that. But um, this time I thought I would uh, just have something different. Um, I went to Utah this past week and last night, I, or yesterday, the night before last, actually Thursday night, I spent the night camping in Arches National Park. So I went to the National Parks website of the United States where I live and found Arches National Park and I took some things from the website there a little bit about how to stay safe in the desert a little bit about the weather so I thought it'd be fun to uh, read about that and discuss that a little bit. Lots of different types of vocabulary for you um, if you're interested in nature or traveling or something like that, then um, you can. This is what it would be good for. Hi there. How are you? Hi, how are you? Hi. Uh, no, excuse me, teacher. Uh, I only see. I only see and listen. I am level, level beginner. You're a very beginner? You don't sound like yes. a beginner. <laughs> You sound good. Thank you, teacher. No, it's only see your classes and listening. Great. Okay. Where, where, Lorena, where are you from? I am from Colombia. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Great. Welcome. Um, did you open the link? Lorena, did you open the link? I'm putting the link in the Verbling chat. If you look over here in the Verbling chat, then you see the link and you click on the link and then it opens up a window with the document. And I see that lots of people are going there already. That's wonderful. So if you want to join the class, click on the green join class button. And as soon as we have the class uh, people settled in here, then we will start reading. And we will talk about this um, information that I got. It's not really an article per se. It's just more like um, information. And actually, I was hearing some people today, mostly people in Europe, so they're probably not going to join this class because it's, they're sleeping right now. Um, in Europe, but um, except for Nihon, she's in Turkey and she's still awake. Um, <laughs> and uh, so yeah. Oh, and Conrad, you're awake. What time is it, Conrad, in Norway? Hello, Lisa. Hi. How are I'm you? Good. Oh, wait, you're in Finland. No, no, I'm not Finland. I'm in London. You're in London. What are you doing yeah, in London? London. What are you doing in London? Conrad? Um, I'm here. No, no, I am not in Finland. I am visiting some friends here in London. Wow. What time is it there? It's 4 a.m. Did you wake up early or are you staying up late? No, I am a, a, a little late. <laughs> okay. No more, no more that. <laughs> How about you? Well, it's only eight o'clock here in my house, so I'm not ready for bed yet. But I am not staying up that late. I'm gonna go to bed in a little while. <laughs> okay. What time? What time is over there? My time right now in Washington. A little bit after eight. PM. Oh, very, very. 
That's great a good difference. Time. Great difference to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm seeing here people coming in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So it looks like we are full for this class. Um, however, this is a reading class, and I already posted the link over there. And so if you are not in the Google Hangouts down here, that's okay. You can follow along and listen to us. We will be reading the article and discussing. It's not really an article. It's more like information. So um, let's first start off with quick introductions. Some people are back from the last hour. And some people are joining us now. Um, I'm just going to tell you as a way of introducing myself. I'm Lisa, and I live in Washington State in the United States. That's on the West Coast, um, near the Pacific Ocean, just below Canada. That's where I live. It's um, in the left-hand corner, if you're looking at the map of the United States. Um, very far from, like, New York or Washington, D.C., that area. It's on the west coast. So let's see who we have today in the class. Ahmed, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, what time is it where, and where are you? I'm uh, from Egypt and the time now is uh, 5 a.m. Wow. Okay, great. And um, Binoxi. Binoxi, Binoxi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Is that, is that your name? No, you can oh. call me Ning. Ning? Yes. Ning, where do you live? I'm from Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. It, every time I type, it mutes me now. Um, so what time is it right now in Thailand? Uh, Ten. Okay. Ten o'clock. In the morning? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Elizabeth, um, the difference between where I am in Washington and Boston, I think, is uh, three hours. I'm pretty sure. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Selvin, how are you? You might have your microphone muted. Hi, hi there you go. I'm fine, Lisa. How are you? Good, thank you. Okay. Where are you from? I'm from Dominican Republic. Oh, okay. So what time is it there? Like 10 or 11? Uh, 11. 11, yeah. Yes. Good. 11, 10 past 11. Sure, yeah, a little bit after 11. Great. Okay. Hey, Seven, do you have your Verbling window open? Um, I think so. Okay, you can yes. close you can close the Verbling window, but leave the Google Hangout window open. Okay. Okay, that then we don't hear the repeat. Thanks, Fernando. Yeah. How are you? Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm very well. And and where are you calling in from? Connecting in from? Where am I from? Uh huh. I am from Argentina. Oh. Argentina. There is it midnight there now? It is uh, ten past twelve in Argentina. Yeah. Middle night. Yeah, ten past midnight. Okay, so it's late. Do you go to bed late usually? Uh, more or less at this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. All right, and Jose, where are you? Yes, teacher. Hi. Jose, where are you from? Oh, we have two Jose's. Hold on. Uh, Jose Arboleda. I am Jose. from Colombia. Okay, Colombia. But in Colombia, is that the same time as Argentina or different? This is uh, it's ten eleven. Oh, okay, so different. Okay. Ten eleven p.m. Yeah. Okay. Great. And Jose Roberto. Hi, Lisa. Hi. How are I, you? I'm from Brazil. Okay. I'm fine. Wonderful. Okay. What, what time is it? Where are you in Brazil? Yeah. 
Uh, now Brazil is uh, 11 after midnight. Oh, after midnight, yeah, yeah, yeah. What state are you in, in Brazil? Yeah, I'm from São Paulo, uh, São José dos Campos City. Yeah, okay, big city. <laughs> oh, yes, big city. <laughs> big city, big city. Okay, Juan, how are you doing, Juan? Hello. Hello. Good evening. And where are you connecting in from? From Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Okay, great. I had I've had three students from Costa Rica today. That's great. Oh, really? Yeah. Great. Ah, awesome. What? Uh, where do you live in Costa Rica? In San Jose. San Jose. Yep. All of them from San Jose. <laughs> okay. And Conrad. Yeah. So you're in you're you're in London right now. I'm in London, yeah. Visiting friends. Yeah, some friends. Very good friends. Nice. How long have you been there? Um, only for this weekend, no more. Okay. And mm. how how did you get there? Did you fly or take the boat? A boat? No, 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 flight. Fly. Okay. Plane. Yeah. Plane. It, it, Sometimes it's cheap. Yeah. It's how cheap. how long does it take? How long is the flight? Um, two hours, two and a half hours. Two and hours. a half. Okay, that's pretty close. Yeah. yeah it's close. Here in Europe, it's, every place is close. It's no problem. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to travel in Europe. It's easy. Yeah, for, for example, if yeah. you take the train uh, London to Paris, it's two, of, two and a half hour, no more. Nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's oh, nice when you can travel by train so fast. It's perfect, perfect. If you are touring, you could check, you could uh, admire different places. Yeah. But could it, could I ask you one thing? Sure. Uh, do you live in Washington? Is it near to Boston or not? No. No. Because uh, all the times I am watching the news about the Boston tragedy, the Boston. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no. Um, actually, I have been. Uh, I was in Utah for this last week so I didn't hear anything about what was happening in Boston until yesterday when we went to the airport and then when we were in Salt Lake City Utah at the airport is when I started to see all of the um, news on on the TV about uh, what happened in Boston but Boston is on the East Coast and I live on the West Coast and yes. Texas? Uh, Texas is the south. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Boston is pretty far from where I am. Probably about four hours by plane, something like that. It's very far. Yeah. But wa you might be thinking of uh, Washington. Oops. <laughs> Washington, D.C. D.C. Yeah. yeah, that's the capital. Yeah, well, but that's close to Boston. Yeah. Okay, Balin, welcome back. You Hello, love her? teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <you love her. laughs> Yay! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Okay>. Um, <laughs> Hello. Uh, hi again. I'm from Venezuela. I'm in 1046. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> why? Why is it? What? Why? It's it's a half an hour. It's like uh, the time difference is only a half an hour. You know? Yeah. Like I hate. I hate everything here because the <laughs> the last president changed the the hour the hours and everything is a mess. I confused with the hours in the yeah. whole country because it's thirty minutes and yeah. it's confusing. Um, Yes, ah, no, it's a mess. I hate it. 
<laughs> so is that something that's new? That's kind of new? Um, yeah, like six years ago or oh, five. Okay. Yes, it's yeah. something new. Oh, I hate okay. it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, we have people from everywhere here. Now we have people in the Verbling chat that are in Turkey also and, and other countries in Thailand. So that's got lots of people here. So you guys, let's see. Let's go to the um, what I put here in the Google document. So like I said, um, this past week what I was doing was I was on a, what we call a field trip. So when you go to school, a lot of times teachers like to take their students on field trips. And usually for the field trip, you go somewhere different. Um, not usually very far, but my daughter's teacher likes to have big adventures. So he planned a field trip to this, a whole different state, which is Utah. And we went to um, Utah to the desert and we uh, we were in some river rafts floating down the river for many days and we were camping and everything and then the last night we went to um, Arches National Park and that's where I got this information from and I, th I thought it would be just fun to do something different than an article because this has different types of vocabulary and it might be something that you actually um, would use in English because even though you might read um, websites online for example for news and stuff in order to um, practice your English it's also good to practice your English um, to actually go to websites uh, that you need to get information from so any kind of like uh, public websites governmental uh, websites things like that and for people who are also needing to study for certain types of English proficiency tests. A lot of times on the tests they'll have some real life materials for you to read to get information and then have questions or something like that about that type of information. So I thought we would uh, read this. It's about Arches National Park which is in Moab, Utah. And the way we do the yes, reading... Sir. Yes, go ahead. Uh, is that a hurt person in the in the photo? Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh my God! <laughs> yes, um, and we say, uh, let's see. In it's an injured person. Okay, it's injured. Injured, yeah. So if you get injured, so of course, um, in the desert of Utah, there's lots of what we call extremes. So lots of things can happen. Um, you have to, if you're there during the summer, for example, it could get very hot, but it can also get very cold. And so um, the part that I chose um, to read about was two parts. We're going to read about safety. So this is about safety in the park and also weather in the park. And I have a few pictures. If you've already scrolled down, maybe you saw them. But um, so these are some things that you would like if you were coming to the United States and you wanted to go to a national park, then you can look on the website and then it would give you all kinds of information about what uh, the temperatures like during the different seasons and the different months of the year, the different things that you might want to bring with you and how to have a good safe trip um, to the park. And so that's kind of what this information is about. So we're going to read the first part is uh, being about safety. And what we do is I'm going to highlight one paragraph at a time. And I will read it out loud. And when I'm reading, uh, you can listen and listen to how I pronounce the words. And then I will call on one of you to read. And you will read again what I just read. And so that'll give you a chance to practice your pronunciation and your reading. And if you do not understand um, some word, then just let me know. But I'm also going to explain. So there, I'm going to explain some of the vocabulary yeah, know, that might be difficult. Teacher, excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Um, I gotta go. Uh, thank you for all. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Goodbye. All right. I'll see you next time. Okay. Goodbye. All right. Thanks. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye bye, Servan. All right, so Servan uh, needs to go. So if somebody wants to join the class, we're just about ready to start doing the actual reading. So you can um, click on the join class button. It's a green join class button. And then you can go to the Google Doc and open it. All right. Okay, so let's see. Safety. Each year, park rangers respond to dozens of search or rescue incidents in the park. These frequently involve heat exhaustion, dehydration, climbing or scrambling, and improper footwear. Okay. Ahmed, why don't you read that? Me? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Each year, park rangers respond to dozens of search or rescue incidents in the park. These frequently involve heat exhaustion, uh, dehydration, climbing or scrambling, and improper footwear. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, because this is talking about safety, they're going to tell you what are the problems that they're having. So, these guys right here in the green, they are known as park rangers. So it's their job to work in the park and to help the tourists and the people who are visiting and camping and climbing and hiking and help them stay safe. And they also um, take care of other things in the park like the animals and stuff like that. Um, so each year they respond to dozens of search and rescue. So that's what we call search or rescue incidents. An incident is something that happens. So maybe somebody fell, uh, maybe somebody is missing, something like that. So an incident is something that happens. And this word here frequently is um, a lot of times. So a lot of times these types of incidents include people having heat exhaustion for probably in the summer when it can get very hot there. and um, Or dehydration. Do you guys know what dehydration means? Dehydration means if you haven't been drinking enough water, you start getting dehydrated. That means your body is um, probably it's getting tired and it's maybe making it harder for you to breathe, stuff like that. You, you need to drink water, basically. You need to stay dehydrated. I mean, you, you need to stay hydrated by drinking water and also eating. That's really important. Or sometimes accidents happen if uh, people are rock climbing or what they call scrambling. And sometimes this can happen because they have improper, so that means the wrong kind of footwear. So they don't have the right type of shoes that they're supposed to be having when they're climbing or hiking or something like that. So maybe they fall and hurt themselves, something like that. So there's a lot of different vocabulary words just in that one uh, paragraph there. We want your visit to be safe and enjoyable. Below are some of the potential hazards you may experience during your visit. Please become familiar with them and keep them in mind while you're here. Okay. Oh, Bawaz, you just joined us. Hi there. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm great, thank you. I'm okay. sorry. I'm, I'm late. <laughs> no, sorry. No problem. You got in. Okay, yeah. so... Um, would you like to read? Uh, yep. Which okay. one? Uh, right there where it says, we want your visit to be safe. Did you, you see that? Yep, yeah. We want your visit to be safe and enjoyable. Below are some of the potential, potential? potential hazards you may experience during your visit. Please become familiar with them and keep them in mind while you're here. Mm -hmm. So they want you to be, yes? Yeah. Potential and hazards. What is that? Yeah. Okay. So below, so they're saying down here, potential. So when something is a potential, it's possible. So these are the possible, and a hazard is like a problem. So these are the possible problems, things that could happen to you, bad things. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, potential means like it could happen. It has the potential to happen, it might happen, 
and a hazard is something that is dangerous. That um, is an academic word? Uh, mm, yeah. Mm, oh, okay. Not, not necessarily, but yeah. yeah, things that are hazardous would be like sharp things, fire, uh, anything that you can get hurt. Yeah, <laughs> I that get would it. Be a hazard. Yeah, okay, so these are some things that you might have happened to you while you visit the park. So they just want you to, um, this word here, become familiar. They want you to understand the different things and to be aware of them and keep them in mind. So when you keep something in mind, that's an expression. Mm -hmm. Keep it in mind just means that you, um, you can think about it so that you know this is possible. So you're not going there... Um, uneducated. You want to be educated about how to take care of yourself when you're there. So the first one is about heat and sun. During the summer expect high temperatures, intense sunlight and low humidity. Eat plenty of food and drink at least one gallon of water each day. More if involved in strenuous activities. Okay, let's see. Fernando. Uh, okay. During the summer, expect high temperatures, intense sunlight, and low humi humidity. Eat plenty of food and drink at least one gallon of water each day. More if if involved in strenuous activities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So high temperatures. Uh, that can mean in, in Fahrenheit, like a hundred degree height. I think that's uh. In the in the, I think, but high. So it can get pretty hot, and it can be intense. So lots of sun, and low humidity. So not a lot of water. It's very dry, uh, dry or what we call be arid or dry. Um, so they want you to eat a lot of food and drink a gallon of water. That's a lot of water, and even more if you're doing something strenuous. Strenuous. It's hard like you're doing rock climbing or you're hiking many, many miles or kilometers and something where you're going to be sweating because you're being very active. So they want you to stay um, hydrated and eat and drink plenty of food and water. You want to wear, wear loose-fitting, light-colored clothing and a wide-brimmed hat. Apply sunscreen to all exposed skin. Consider saving strenuous activity for early mornings or evenings. Water is available at the visitor center and at Devil's Garden Trailhead and Campground. Okay. Uh, Jose Arboleda? Yes, teacher. We lost feeding light colored clothing and white primen had a piece screen to all exposed in the scheme. Mm -hmm. Consider saving strenuous activity for early mornings or evenings. What is available at the visitor counter and at Davis Garden trailing and cobroom? Mm -hmm. So you want to wear loose fitting, so clothes that are loose on you. They're not tight, they're just loose so that you can move around and you're comfortable. You want to wear light colored, so not like black, brown, probably like white or yellow or something like that. And a wide brimmed hat. So that's a type of a hat that covers, uh, that comes out, out of your head kind of and has like a shade. So it gives you shade all around um, so the sun doesn't go on your face. And you want to use sunscreen. Exposed means all of the parts of the skin that are going to be um, seen. So if you have a short sleeve shirt on, your arms, you're going to be exposed to the sun. So you want to put the sunscreen there. And you want to um, do your strenuous or hard or difficult activities either early in the morning when it's um, cooler or later in the evening when it's cooler. And they're telling you where you can get water. Um, all the time when you go to uh, parks, a lot, of, a lot of times they have a visitor center, and that's where you can get information, or you can buy gifts like t-shirts and things like that. And then they have these, the trailhead, that's 
that's the name of the place where the trail starts. So if you're going to go hiking, you have the you start at the trail head. That's the beginning of the trail. And the campground, of course, is where you camp. So if you're going to, um, if you have an RV or a tent or something like that, that's where you're going to sleep. You're going to sleep at a, at a campground, okay? All right, so the next one here is proper footwear. So wear sturdy shoes with enough tread to give you good traction. Do not hike in smooth-soled shoes or boots. Some trails cover uneven terrain and follow rock whoops, ledges. Okay, so Jose Roberto. Okay, Lisa, let's try. So, Robert Jose, uh, hold on. Oh, yeah. So, in, you're, yeah. you're from Brazil? Yes, I'm from Brazil. So, do you say Jose or Jose? Uh, in Brazil, Jose. Jose, okay. All right, Jose. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, Lisa, let's try. Proper footwear. We are stir the shoes with enough tread to give you good traction. Do not hike. Do not hike in smooth, solid shoes or boots. Some trails cover uneven terrain and follow rocks, ledges. Mm -hmm. Great. So when you have when something is proper, that means the right so the right thing. You, so you want to have the right type of footwear. So usually when you go to the parks, you're going to be walking or hiking, and so you want to have sturdy shoes. Sturdy means strong. They're shoes that are not going to fall apart or they're not flimsy or weak like tennis shoes maybe, but hiking shoes are strong shoes and they have enough tread. So the tread is the part on the bottom. So when you have hiking shoes, um, let me show you a picture just so make sure everybody uh, we're talking about here. Sometimes it's easier to show a picture. So these kind of shoes are hiking shoes and the bottom here, the black part, that's the tread. And you want to have a good tread so that you can um, uh, you know, if you step on rocks or something slippery, you're not going to fall. So you want to have a good type of a hiking shoe um, that will keep your feet safe and they, uh, you won't slip on the ground. Because sometimes it can be uneven. So it's not that like a road. It can be up and down, up and down um, terrain, which means landscape. So the dirt and the rocks and everything. And the ledges, those are the... Uh, the ends of the rock, so kind of like a cliff edge. So if you're walking along the the ledge, you got to be careful. You don't want to slip. All right, here you go, Emilio. This is where you were asking about scrambling. So here we go, climbing and scrambling. Slick rock invites adventure. When you climb or scramble, be sure you can retrace your steps. And remember that it is often easier to go up than down. Sandstone is very slippery when wet or covered in snow. All right, so here we go, Juan. Okay, uh, climbing and scrambling. S slick rock invites adventure. When you climb or scramble, be sure you can retrace your steps. And remember that it is often easier to go up than down. Sandstone mm -hmm. is... Let me scroll down. Very slippery, yeah. Okay. Sandstone, uh, sandstone is very slippery when wet or covered in snow. Yes. So, uh, the sandstone, so this is, uh, these are a lot of pictures of Arches National Park. So, what they're talking about here is this kind of rock is called sandstone. And it can be very slippery, and so when you're climbing, you either are going to be climbing or scrambling means you're just walking on this rock. And sometimes it looks fun, and you're like, oh, I want to go hiking up there. I'm going to climb that rock. But uh, the most important thing is that you can get back down because probably you've seen or maybe you've tried it before where you um, climb up a rock and then you get up pretty high and then it's kind of scary and you don't want to go back down <laughs> because it can be hard to get back down or maybe you're going to slide or, or 
something. <laughs> Basically, what they're telling you there is if you're going to climb up these rocks, make sure that you can get back down so you don't get stuck at the top. And it does snow here in the winter, even though it's the desert. It can snow and it can have uh, rain, flash floods and things. So you have to be careful. So it depends on what um, time of year you're there. And uh, you just got to watch out um, and be safe. Okay? So that's what it kind of looks like there, some of the pictures there. All right. So here we go. Let's see. Slick rock. I'm going to go over some rock. Slick. When something is slick, it's slippery. So like rock, when it gets wet, it can be very slippery. That means you can fall easily. Um, and it, it's, But it's very easy to climb on. And um, so it's kind of fun. To, so it invites adventure. It means it, it welcomes you. you. It looks like, oh, I want to go climb that. But if you're climbing it or scrambling. Scrambling here just means like kind of walking up it or you know, going from one part to the next part. Not necessarily really climbing, but just more like walking on it. You have to be able to retrace steps. So go back where you, you came from because <laughs> it's easier to go up than down. And that is that word sandstone. Uh, just the, the terminology for, for the geological term, how to describe that type of uh, rock. And slick, that means uh, also slick. You know, when you fall, that's slippery. It can be slippery. All right, the other thing to watch out for when you're in the desert here is lightning and flash flood. Uh, should say floods there. <laughs> they put foods. Uh, storms and flash floods can be powerful and sudden. When lightning is present, avoid lo lone trees, cliff edges, and high ridges. Crouch low to the ground. Return to your vehicle if possible. Never try to cross a wash that is flooding. Okay, Conrad. Okay. Tom and flat crew can be powerful and sudden. When lightning presents a bow on trees, cliff edges, and high ridges, crouch low to the ground, return to your bike, stay by cool if possible. Never try to cross a watch that is floating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, so you got to be careful for storms. So it's, when it starts raining, clouds come over and phew, lightning sometimes. And these flash floods are kind of crazy. Um, so what they have here in the desert uh, is sometimes they have time. And then what happens is they have these areas that you call washes. That's where the water runs through. So in a very short time, you can get these, this fast-moving water uh, coming through these washes and it can be a flood. So if, if you're walking around, say, and you see these dark clouds coming, it's probably a, bit, a good idea to just go back to your car and go to somewhere where you're not going to be in the way of uh, the water because the water can actually um, accumulate or happen really fast and you can get stuck. So this, for example, this is a little picture. I don't know if you can see it very well, but this truck got stuck because it was in an area, in a wash is what you call that area, um, when it started to rain a lot and then it just started to flood. So you have to uh, be careful about that. That only happens in certain, certain seasons, so it doesn't happen all the time, but if you're there in that particular time of the year, then you have to be aware of that happening. So, yeah. All right. Let's see, any more things here? So lightning, you guys probably know what lightning is. Light from the sky. Uh, so you want to avoid lone trees. Trees is, means like one tree standing by itself. And the edge of a cliff is the, like the side where you could fall off. So you don't want to go to the cliff edge. You don't want to fall off. And high ridges. Those are just high, high rocks. You want to crouch. So when you crouch, you curl yourself up and you go as low to the ground as possible, like a little, like an animal or something. And uh, never try to cross the wash. The wash is a riverbed that's dry, but when it um, when it rains, then it, that's where the water goes, and it starts to flood. All right, winter travel. 
Winter temperatures can drop well below freezing. So uh, freezing for you guys is zero, but for us it's uh, hypothermia is a hazard in late fall, winter, and early spring. When hiking during these times, carry extra layers of clothing, foul weather gear, and a flashlight. Even a few inches of snow can hide cairns and trails or make slick rock areas impassable. Okay, so lots of things to be careful for when you're out here in the desert. All right, let's see. Balen. Okay. Winter travel. Winter temperatures can drop well below freezing, 32 Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Hy hypothermia is a hazard in late fall, winter and early spring. When hiking during these times, carry extra layers of clothing, full weather gear, and a flashlight. Even a few inches of snow can hide cairns and trails, or make slack rock areas impossible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, Fawa is a storm. Uh, sorry. A storm is when it's raining. Uh, maybe it's cloudy. Maybe there's a uh, lightning. That that storm. Maybe a storm can also bring snow. Sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so the temperatures can drop. That means it, it goes down. And hypothermia. That's the name happens to your body when you get very cold. When you get very cold and you're shivering and you just can't get very warm, then your body it goes into hyper hypothermia. You're not you're not staying warm. You're not maintaining your body heat and temperature. And that's a hazard or a danger. Happen um, in different seasons, the fall, winter and even in the early spring. So the time when the temperatures are, can be very low. Um, if you're out in the desert and you're hiking at this time, you have to always carry extra layers of clothing. So that means extra shirts, long sleeve shirts, maybe extra jacket, maybe you have long underwear on, uh, extra pants. You want extra uh, clothing so you can keep, keep putting more on. In fact, um, when I was in the desert this past week, it got very cold at night. And some nights I was wearing three pairs of pants. <laughs> I wore three pairs of pants. I wore three. Wow, teacher. Or I yeah, I wore three pairs of wool socks, <laughs> and I had six six layers. I had six layers on my top. I had like a wool shirt. I had two cotton shirts. I had a wool sweater. I had a jacket and a rain jacket. <laughs> and that's what where was I, the temperature? It it was freezing. Yeah. It was like maybe maybe 28 degrees, which in uh, let's see, it's, let me figure out what that is in self. Look it up here because I don't know. Change it in my head like that. So let's see. So it's 28. It was like minus two degrees. Oh my god. Yeah. I will die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was cold. <laughs> but then, and then I was in my sleeping bag. Oh my god, no. <laughs> yeah, sleeping bag and my tent, and then I had a hat on too. And, and, I, and I had... <laughs> it was cold. Okay. And it was, um, it was very cold because, uh, because it was windy. So we had a lot of wind. Um, it made oh it very God, dry. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's what it means. Um, foul weather. So the word foul means when it's not good. <laughs> so it's like not good weather gear. So that's the kind of gear you want, like wool um, or cotton. You don't really want cotton. Cotton's not good because if cotton gets uh, wet, it gets very cold. And of course, you need a flashlight. And then, yeah, so Cairns. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture of that because that's a little bit. And they used mountains of rocks to, whoops. They used mountains of rocks 
to uh, kind of show where things are. So they're kind of like signals or indicators of where something is. So they put these out in the desert. Sometimes people stack them up to show you where different things are. Um, so even a little bit of snow can cover that up and also it can cover up the trail so you don't maybe you get lost you, you don't know where you are um, and then also obviously it can make the slick rock area impassable so that means you can't you can't go there because it's too slippery so if it's snowing you probably should go back to your <laughs> car <laughs> and leave <laughs> no all right so staying found uh, stay with companions while hiking separation can mean getting lost do not count on a cellular phone to summon help. Cellular service will not reach into many areas of arches. If you become lost, stay where you are and wait for rescue. Okay, uh, let's see who we have with Ahmed. Ahmed, are you there? Maybe your microphone is muted. Okay, maybe he left. Maybe he went to go get something to eat. Okay, Fawaz. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get it. <laughs> okay, you got it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Staying found. Stay with convenient while hiking. Separating can mean getting lost. Do not count on a color phone. Uh, to summon help. Mm -hmm. Color surface will not reach into many areas of Earth. If you become lost, stay where you are and wait for resource. Rescue. Rescue. Sorry. Uh -huh. Sure. So stay with companions. So your companions are friends. They are the ones that you are hiking with. So it's friends. always yeah, it's always better to hike with other people in case something happens to you. So you want to stay with your friends while you're hiking, when you're hiking. Uh -huh. um, separation, so apart. Um, can, if you get uh, separated from each other, maybe one of you will get lost. Um, and you cannot count. So this is a, a phrasal verb here, to count on. So that means you can't expect to use your cell phone. You can't count on that. Uh -huh. um, because sometimes you can't get service. So to summon means to get help or to ask for help. So, you know, obviously if you're in the city and you get lost, you can just pick up your phone and say, hey, come and pick me up. I'm at, you know, First and First Street and over here by the McDonald's or something like that, right? But um, right. When, you're, when you're out in the desert, you can't do that. You have you to. You can't. <laughs> You can't call a friend. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you just have to, um, they want you to stay where you are. So don't keep walking. If you're already lost, you might walk in a whole different direction and get more farther away from where you need to be um, if you're already to, uh, lost. So that's what you have to do. You have to wait until they come to rescue you. So that is when the park rangers come and they find you. Then they rescue you. Yeah. Rescue, find you. Yeah, rescue is to save, to save you. Yeah, or um, rescue can also mean like um, yeah, anytime you get a person gets lost, or a rescue can also mean like say somebody fell in the water and uh -huh. they don't know how to swim, and you jump in and you save them. That means you rescue them. You rescue, you save, verb, yeah. right? Yeah, that's a verb. Mm -hmm. What is the past? Rescue? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Rescued. Yeah, you could say, I rescued my friend from drowning. <laughs> you know, I get or, it. Yeah. yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, Emilio, you, you, if you, you call somebody, I'm next to that big rock over there. <laughs> that would be hard. I'm, back, I'm next to the dune. I'm on some sand. <laughs> right, so wandering will endanger your life and make finding you difficult. When traveling alone, always tell someone where you are going and when you expect to return. Okay. <laughs> So, let's see, where were we? Fernando. 
okay, wondering will endanger your life and make finding you difficult. Mm -hmm. When traveling alone, always tell someone where you are going and when you expect to return. Yeah. So I think most people say don't travel alone, but obviously if you do, it's always good to tell them, like, I'm going on this trail, I'll be back in two hours. And so if you're not back in two hours, then they'll go tell a park ranger, and then they will go send somebody out looking for you. And uh, so wandering means, wandering is when you're walking, but you're not really, um, you're not going specifically to one place, you're just kind of walking around. So don't do that. You need to stay on the trails, you need to know where you're going, and you need to know where you're going to come back. You don't just take off the trail and go start looking at rocks and plants, because pretty soon, you're probably going to be lost because this area um, is huge. So, so it's kind of, uh, uh, and a lot of it looks the same. So you can imagine if you're uh, wandering around out here, then it, it's, it's going to be easy to, to get lost. So that's why they really want you to stay on the trails and uh, know where you're going. So they have, they have the trails are marked, so you can tell where there's a trail. Um, so it makes it pretty easy, actually. Okay, so let's see. So there's a little picture there. Now the last part we're going to read is about the weather. So southeast Utah is part of the Colorado Plateau, a high desert region that experiences wide temperature fluctuations, sometimes over 40 degrees in a single day. Okay, Jose, Arboleda. If you're talking, I can't hear you. Maybe your microphone is muted. Jose? Okay, Jose. Jose Hubert? Yeah. Jose Hubert? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, there. Uh, so, uh, excuse. Southeast Utah. Uh, Southeast Utah is a part of the Colorado Plateau, a high desert region that experiences wide temperature fluctuations, sometimes over 40 degrees in a single day. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so plateau just means a high desert. Uh, the Colorado Plateau goes through lots of different uh, states, actually, including Colorado and Utah and maybe, I think, um, Ari uh, Arizona. Um, and this whole area can experience what they're calling wide temperature fluctuation. So it goes up and down a lot. So it just fluctuates. The temperature fluctuates. So it can start out in the morning, for example, uh, 20, it can get over uh, 7, that's in one day, so that, that's a huge uh, temperature range, and um, that's why you have to bring lots of layers of clothing, because in the morning you're going to start off freezing, and then later on you're going to start getting hot, <laughs> so you have to have lots of different clothing and um, be aware of what can happen. The temperature, or sorry, uh, the temperate and most popular seasons are spring, April through May, and fall, mid-September through October, when daytime highs average 60 to 80, deg 80 degrees Fahrenheit and lows average 30 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, Juan. Juan, <laughs> what is happening? Okay, Conrad. Nobody. Yeah, they maybe they went some. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had the microphone muted. Okay, no problem. Go ahead, Juan. Okay, summer temperatures often exceed 100 Fahrenheit, making strenuous exercise difficult. Late summer monsoon, monsoon. No. Season brings. Hold on. Violent. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> read the part that I read. The temperate and most popular seasons, right there. You got ahead of us a little bit. Okay. 
You see that part? Yeah. Okay. The temperate and most popular seasons are spring, April through May, and fall, mid-September through October, when daytime highs average 60 to 80 Fahrenheit and lows average 30 to 50 Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so ba yeah, basically, uh, yeah, you can stop. So basically, spring is not very long. April through May, that's only two months. And then mid-September through October, that's not even two months. So there's kind of a short window, we can say, a short window, a short time period when that is optimal or like the best time, the most comfortable. Of course, you could go there in the summer, but it's going to be really hot. So we're going to read. Summer temperatures often exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit, making strenuous exercise difficult. Late summer monsoon season brings violent storm cells, which often cause flash floods. That would be scary. Okay, Conrad? Okay. Summer temperature often exceeds 100 Fahrenheit, making strenuous exercise difficult. Late summer monsoon season brings violent storm cells, which often, often cause flash floods. Yes. So exceed means over. So they get even hotter than 100. It goes over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, here's that word strenuous. So anything that is makes you tired or that's hard, that's called strenuous activity. So walking is not very strenuous. Running is strenuous. Um, and then they have monsoons. So uh, that's when there's a lot of rain. So a monsoon is like a lot of rain. Um, a storm cell, that would be like a bunch of clouds gathering up, like dark gray clouds, and then a bunch of rain causes these flash floods, like I showed you those pictures before. Winters are cold, with highs averaging 30 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and lows averaging 0 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Though large snowfalls are uncommon, except in nearby mountains, even small amounts of snow or ice can make local trails and roads impassable. So here we have that word again. Okay, Valen. Yeah. I'm not searching for food. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> okay. Winters are cold with high averaging uh -huh. 30 to 50 Fahrenheit. And lost ever Ever, oh, I hate that word. Ever, ever again? Yes, average. Zero. Yeah. Everything. Oh. oh Zero. Mm -hmm. That's good. Oh, I, I, I lost. I, I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay. Um, the large snowballs are uncommon except in nearby mountains. Even small amounts of snow, of snow or ice can make local trails and roads impossible. Yeah. So we're just finishing up here. Uh, so yeah, obviously it's very cold, very, very cold, and it can have some snow, although uh, mostly in the mountains. There are some high mountains. Oh, you got to remember also um, this desert, it can, I thought, I'm not sure the elevation, but I think of the desert is already something like uh, five. So it's already pretty high up. So then they have these higher mountains um, in the distance, and you can see them. And so they're even higher. So a lot of times they'll have snow on them. I saw snow. Um, and even before we got there this week, I think on Tuesday, it snowed a little bit. So it snowed in the early spring. And basically they're just saying that, yeah, even if it snows or has some ice, um, it can make the roads impassable. So that means you can't, you can't pass them. It's, it, you can't drive on them, too icy. So um, that's what that means. All right, we're going to just read this last one. Local weather conditions and forecasts. So I will read it because we're just running out of time. So if you're interested, this is common vocabulary too for if you're finding out about other places you want to visit. So we talk about weather conditions. So you want to know if it's sunny and warm or raining or snowing or something like that. And forecasts, so what they think in, in the next day or two or three, then you can call this phone number and it'll have recorded information for you. Or you can go to this 
this website here, and it'll tell you what the upcoming temperatures are going to be like. And if you want to know when the sun is going to come up, that's called sunrise, or when it's going to go down, that's sunset, you can find the times at this uh, website. And here's just a couple more pictures. I saw some bighorn sheep. These are called bighorn sheep. It's really awesome to see them in, in person, <laughs> alive in the wild animals. And then camping, that's what it looks like. People camping in tents. Um, there's also RVs, which are these, uh, car, these cars that you camp in. And people have trucks, things like that. So there you go. That's all for this class, you guys. Thanks, everybody. Does anybody have any questions before we end the class? Any, any words you didn't know that you wanted me to go over real quick? No? Anybody want to go to the desert? <laughs> Is it too cold or <laughs> too hot? <laughs> oh, there's no, no. Of Thank you, Lisa, the for the class. I guess no. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, no big screen TVs or pools either. <laughs> teacher, you yeah. Okay. Night. All right. No, no verbling either. <laughs> no. In the desert. <laughs> okay, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. I'll see you Thank next you. time. Thank you very much, Check teacher. You're welcome. <laughs> that a little bit. Lots of different types of vocabulary for you. Um, if you're interested in nature or traveling or something like that, then um, you can. This is what it would be good for. Hi there. How are you? Hi, how are you? Hi. Uh, no, excuse me, teacher. Uh, I only see. I only see and listen. I am level, level beginner. You're a very beginner? You don't sound like yes. a beginner. <laughs> you sound good. Thank you, teacher. No, it's only see your classes and listening. Great. Okay. Where, where, Lorena, where are you from? I am from Colombia. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Great. Welcome. Um, did you open the link? Lorena, did you open the link? I'm putting the link in the Verbling chat. If you look over here in the Verbling chat, then you see the link. And you click on the link, and then it opens up a window with the document. And I see that lots of people are going there already. That's wonderful. Hour. And some people are joining us now. Um, I'm just going to tell you as a way of introducing myself. I'm Lisa. And I live in Washington State in the United States. That's on the West Coast um, near the Pacific Ocean, just below Canada. That's where I live. It's. Um, in the left-hand corner, if you're looking at the map of the United States, um, very far from like New York or Washington D.C., that area. It's on the west coast. So let's see who we have today in the class. Ahmed, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, what time is it? And where are you? I'm. Uh... From Egypt, and the time now is uh, 5 a.m. Wow. Okay, great. And um, Benaxi. Benaxi, Benaxi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Is that, is that your name? No, you can oh. call me Ning. Ning? Yes. Ning, where do you live? I'm from Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. It, every time I type, it mutes me now. Um, so what time is it right now in Thailand? Wake up early or are you staying up late? No, I am a, a, a little late. <laughs> okay. No more, no more that. <laughs> How about you? Well, it's only 8 o'clock here in my house, so I'm not ready for bed yet. But I am not staying up that late. I'm going to go to bed in a little while. <laughs> what, time, what time is over there? My time right now in Washington, a little bit after 8. 
p.m. Oh, very big. That's Great a good difference. time. Great difference to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm seeing here people coming in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So it looks like we are full for this class. Um, however, this is a reading class, and I already posted the link over there. And so if you are not in the Google Hangouts down here, that's okay. You can follow along and listen to us. We will be reading the article and discussing. It's not really an article. It's more like information. So um, let's first start off with quick introductions. Some people are back from the last. So if you want to join the class, click on the green Join Class button. And as soon as we have the class uh, people settled in here, then we will start reading. And we will talk about this um, information that I got. It's not really an article, per se. It's just more like um, information. And actually, I was hearing some people today, mostly people in Europe, so they're probably not going to join this class because it's, they're sleeping right now. Um, in Europe, but um, except for Nihon, she's in Turkey and she's still awake. Um, <laughs> and uh, so yeah. Oh, and Conrad, you're awake. What time is it, Conrad, in Norway? Hello, Lisa. Hi. How are I, you? Good. Oh, wait, you're in Finland. No, no, I'm not Finland. I'm in London. You're in London. What are you doing yeah, in London? London. What are you doing in London? Conrad? Um, I'm here. No, no, I am not in Finland. I am visiting some friends here in London. Wow. What time is it there? It's 4 a.m. Did you wake Hi, everybody. It's Lisa once again. And in this hour, we're going to do a class on, um, well, reading, a reading class. And I chose some information, actually, off of um, a National Parks website. And I put the link up over there in the Verbling chat. So if you're interested in going to the Google document, um, it's a little different type of reading than I usually do. Usually I choose some kind of article, um, like a news article or um, a blog article or something like that. But um, this time I thought I would uh, just have something different. Um, I went to Utah this past week, and last night, I, or yesterday, the night before last, actually Thursday night, I spent the night camping in Arches National Park. So I went to the National Parks website of the United States where I live and found Arches National Park and I took some things from the website there a little bit about how to stay safe in the desert a little bit about the weather so I thought it'd be fun to uh, read about that and discuss 